Heart of the Forest is based on the tabletop RPG Werewolf the Apocalypse, one of the many games in the setting known as the World of Darkness. Alongside Vampire the Masquerade, Mage the Ascension, Hunter the Reckoning, and many more. While Vampire and Hunter have both had multiple video games, this is the first such adaptation for Werewolf the Apocalypse since it was initially published in 1992. So this is a big deal. The game itself is a visual novel, about five hours long, but don't let that fool you into thinking it's a small game. It has five different endings and over 200,000 variations to its branching narrative. There's a lot to see and experience here, and chances are your story will be unique. In Werewolf the Apocalypse, you take on the role of one of the Garu, a race of warriors chosen by the moon to be the champions of Gaia, the primordial concept of creation itself, waging a terrifying war against a worm, the incarnation of destruction and corruption. Werewolves are creatures of multiple dualities, they are both wolves and men, both physical and spiritual. And now, we finally get to see them come to life on our monitors. We could wax poetics about the music and the graphics, and sure, we will. But most of you are here to know if it's a faithful adaptation of the setting it's based on. So let's get this out of the way, shall we? The short version is hell yeah! It helps that the medium of the visual novel is ideal for this. It's the next best thing to being one-on-one -on -one with your storyteller. If you're new to Werewolf and you want to know if this game is for you, rest assured it will take you through the classic phases of becoming one of the Garou. It will teach you all the ropes from the perspective of a girl named Maya who has no idea what she is. By the time you're done, you'll be familiar with all of the basics. It's a great introduction showcasing the most emblematic of all werewolf stories. Save the forest from greedy loggers. If you are a veteran of werewolf, there's a lot to love too, as the game handles the source material with care and respect. If you've ever played through a character's story from before their first change, you'll feel right at home while experiencing it in a whole new way. Heart of the Forest has its moments of sharp claws and teeth gnashing, but expect it to spend just as much time exploring all the other great themes of werewolf, such as moral issues, ecological crises, complex social dynamics, and spirituality. As a visual novel, the gameplay is fairly simple. Text presents you with a situation, then a series of options. You do more than choose a character's actions and dialogues, however. You get to choose her mood, her tone, her motivations, and occasionally directly control the narrative in subtle ways. All of your choices have the potential to increase one of five stats directly corresponding to one of the five auspices, or roles, in Garu society eventually determining which one Maya is. Whether you end up a trickster, a shaman, a judge, a storyteller, or a warrior is entirely dependent on how you approach each scenario. Rage, willpower, and elf are key mechanics of this game. Keeping a high or low rage influences your options every step of the way and constantly impact how the game is described as well as how characters react to you. The quality of the writing is such that, just by reading text, you as a player might feel relaxed or agitated as Maya's rage waxes and wanes. Likewise, the game makes fantastic use of health and willpower in ways both meaningful and trivial. Yes, I said trivial. More than once, I have made a conscious choice to spend points of rage, willpower and health in equal measure just to affect a minor detail in a scene, or just for dramatic effect. There are moments where these mechanics are used to accentuate the emotional impact of a scene. For example, at one point in my second playthrough, just talking to someone Maya 
utterly dislike cost willpower for every dialogue choice, driving home the point that this was a truly taxing moment. Without text, the game was telling me that this was taking everything she had not to lash out. I had the option to risk things turning sour dramatically or let it go. If you run out of health, Maya is exhausted. She won't necessarily die, although that can happen, but she will find some physically draining actions to be impossible, just as an empty tank of willpower will hinder Maya's social and mental endeavors. Yes, the game is relatively short. A playthrough runs about five hours, depending on how fast you read. But that's, in this case, a very good thing. At every turn, you will make meaningful and difficult choices with actual impact that will leave you curious as to what could have happened if you'd only been nicer or meaner, or if you hadn't breached a veil that one time, and so on and so on. At the time of writing, I have personally experienced two vastly different playthroughs with their own surprises and twists. After listening to the experiences of others who have played, their stories were also very different from mine, and that is the game's greatest strength. It adapts to you, using its 200,000 possible variations to tailor an experience just for you, and then it does it again and again. The game's story is simple on the surface, but complex in its execution. It takes place in one of Europe's last primeval forests. Maya is a girl with mysterious origins, come to the Biao Vierja forest to discover who she is, and quickly becomes embroiled with activists trying to prevent illegal logging from destroying their precious forest. It would have been easy to just paint the loggers as bad guys and call it a day, but none of it is black and white. It's all presented with nuances, presenting both sides of the equation. How you handle things is up to you. Do you find a balanced approach to avoid making things worse, or do you meet the challenge head-on and damn the consequences? The same approach is taken with most of the characters Maya encounters, whether they are human, Garu, spirits, or otherwise. They all have a story to tell, and exploring all of those facets, as well as the game's five different endings, is a pretty damn good reason to come back for more. The art style, mixing photography with hand drawing, is refreshing. Much of it is symbolic more than it is realistic, meaning there are a ton of hidden gems to discover, such as a wolf's den shaped like a wolf's head when you realize that the holes are its eyes. A lot of work clearly went into this, and they did not even stop there. Most scenes are filled with dynamic elements such as leaves falling, adding an extra layer of mood. The game's audio actually somehow builds on its visuals. It's no secret that books are an ideal medium to transport their readers into their worlds by the power of their own imagination. Heart of the Forest remembers that. The abstract design combines with the soundscape to augment your imagination, not replace it the way a movie or a video game might. As a result, I found myself right there in the room with Maya on more than one occasion. So far, this has been a rather glowing review, but that doesn't mean it's all roses. In my first playthrough, there was a short segment where there was actually too much going on and I wasn't sure what was happening. It was fine on subsequent replays, thanks to a much better understanding of the characters and the narrative. As a result, expect the first play to be more chaotic, as a good first change story should be anyway, and that you'll have more control in the subsequent ones. In a way, your first play is more about you experiencing the events, while the others are more like a dialogue between you and the game. Without giving away spoilers, a few late game segments felt like they needed to be fleshed out a little more. Veterans probably won't need more in-depth explanations, but it might have been profitable to new players. 
And finally, expect your auspice to play a much, much larger role than your tribe. It makes complete sense considering the structure of the game and the fact that Maya is a pre-changed lost cub, but I can't help but wish that the tribal aspect had been explored more. Heart of the Forest succeeds at doing exactly what it sets out to do. It's an intense burst of Werewolf the Apocalypse that will last you a few evenings well spent. All for a price tag of $14.99. It's a very solid starting point for Werewolf video games. Not to mention, what Walkabout and different tales have achieved here is more than just one good tale. It's a damn strong foundation upon which many other potential stories can be told.